Hello. I hope you are all, all are well. Today I'll briefly talk about the power and price of dissent. And before I delve deeper into it, I think it's kind of important for us to figure out what do we mean by dissent. So technically, in simple terms, a dissenting opinion or a dissenting voice or general dissent is when someone openly expresses an opinion in opposition to what is considered the established norm or what is considered to be the established order. And anytime you voice an opinion contrary to that, suggesting some changes or even suggesting that whatever is being offered as a norm is wrong or needs to be corrected, you are dissenting from the established norm and that act itself is an act of dissent. Now, most of the times when I tell people about how to dissent or why do I dissent the established norms, especially if they come across as unjust or non-transparent or secretive, right, or arbitrary, people usually assume that, you know, I learned it because I studied post-colonial studies and I've studied with liberal leftist scholars. But to be very honest, this habit of challenging the established order or offering my opinions. I had it from a very young age and that was because of my own Muslim heritage. How? Most of us who are from the Muslim countries, especially from South Asia, already know one of the most prominent sayings of Hazrat Ali, right? the fourth caliph of Islam. Famously, it used to be um, on top of one of the Urdu dailies when we were growing up. And all it said was that the best form of jihad or struggle is to speak truth to a tyrant, right? To speak truth to power, which we use here, assuming that it's a totally European or American expression. So seventh century Islam, Ali already taught us that the best form of struggle or jihad is to speak truth to power. So I somehow internalized it from eighth grade. The other part of the Islamic heritage that mobilizes my idea of dissent or at least arguing for justice or speaking against any kind of injustice, social, individual, political, is the three grades of human actions that are permissible in Islam that are recommended in Islam, and you all probably are aware of it, that if you see anything unjust, if you have the power to stop it, stop it. That's the first top injunction, right? If you do not have the power to stop it physically, say something about it, right? Write something about it. That's the second level of dissent. And then the final level of dissent is that if you cannot stop it, if you cannot say anything against it, then at least in, our, in your hearts of hearts, tell yourself that what's happening is wrong. And it's so crucial to understand that because if we fall below that, if we don't even recognize that something is unjust or something is unfair, then we have fallen to a level of humanity where we absolutely do not care what happens to others. So this teaching pretty much permeates the Islamic culture. People have misused it as well, but the basic assumption is that dissent is crucial to constantly creating and sustaining a just society. So that's where I learned this. And of course, in the process of my education in post-colonial studies, of course, I got different vocabularies to express it, but the basic core of my learning came from there. And how did it kind of inform my humanity or my subjectivity? You know, in eighth grade, I went to boarding school. And maybe at that time, it was just performative, like speaking against power, doing things that maybe made me look cool. But part of it was intertwined with helping those who were weak, right? Who kids who were being picked on, always taking a stance with them and not with the bullies. Maybe my approach to it was deeply personal and maybe selfish. Maybe I wanted to be liked, but that performative identity eventually became my socio-political identity where I have tried to always 
align myself with those who are either silenced by power or sidelined by power and have tried to always work in solidarity with them. And any time you do that, you are on a path of dissent because the powers that be, they have a normalized system. And if you build solidarities against it, if you try to change it, if you try to challenge it, then you are part of a dissenting group. And people always ask me, you know, when we go to these rallies and hold our little placards and speak about justice in America or rights of minorities so many times, and I've written about it too, it seems very ineffectual. I mean, we are up against implacable power, power that permeates this globe. And we coming together, you know, what difference can we make? A lot of people who are skeptical of any kind of dissent would tell you, you know, what do you accomplish by this? And it took me a while to learn that, to, to get rid of this feeling that what I'm doing is futile. Because that dissenting voice of a constituency, of a group of people, of an individual in organization is important. Think of it this way, when uh, Mr. Trump started the Muslim ban, and the day it was implemented, spontaneously all across the United States, people, maybe first the relatives of the people who were stopped at the airports, moved, marched to different airports and stood there in solidarity. I stood with people who had no obvious relationship to Muslims, you know, Jews, Christians, right, African Americans. Hispanics, all the people who at one point had felt that the law had discriminated against them, who had a history of knowledge of knowing what happens to large bodies of humans when systems decide to exclude them. Now, it may have impacted the policy. It didn't change it immediately. But what it gave me as a scholar who gives public talks, let's say in Pakistan, where, of course, it's very easy to mobilize a certain specific stereotype of America, it gave me the vocabulary to say, no, we cannot think all Americans are bad, that all Americans are like Trump, because I stood with the very Americans on the side of an airport who came out for justice, who came out to protect the rights of Muslims to enter the United States. And so that was one way dissent. These dissenting people who the conservatives in America always consider weak or disloyal or unpatriotic were the ones whose actions had become a guarantee for me to mobilize, to retrieve an America that could still be respected, that could still be loved by people outside of America. So that's the value of dissent on a larger scale. On a smaller scale, what I've noticed in my life, having worked in Pakistan army as well as in academia, is that maybe when you dissent or when you offer a contrary opinion, Maybe the power shuts you down or people in power tell you that's not pertinent. That's fine. But it becomes part of their thought process. It becomes part of their functioning. The next time they are trying to propose a change or tr trying to sell an idea which they think the change that they want to bring, your dissent is already inscribed in it. Because in the process of writing that rule or writing that policy, they will already incorporate what is so and so going to say about it. So even if it may not be a totally transparent rule, there will be an homage to transparency there. So that means you have already changed the way power works simply by adding a dissenting voice. Now just imagine if there were no dissenting voices, right? then people who have the power to make laws, power to make rules, power to govern us could do whatever they want because there is no resistance. So one value of dissent at all levels in any organization is that it forces the powerful to change at least the way they proffer their policies to the people they govern, right? And that's extremely crucial. In other ways, what it also does is it empowers 
the silenced constituencies. If you come together, right, form a group and talk about what's happening to you, you would realize that you will find so many things in common with each other. And then if you become a constituency and what you offer is not just an individual opinion within a system, but opinion of a constituency, then you can literally force a change, right? Force power and those who work on its behalf to think differently and to act differently. So overall, you are dissenting anytime you offer an opinion or an idea that is contrary to the established norm that either forces it to change or adds new knowledges to what is already assumed as normative. That's an act of dissent. It is crucial because it keeps the system in check. It constantly forces it to change, to reform, to alter itself. And it makes it answerable to the very people that the system is supposed to govern. The only time any system of power would continue doing what it does without any impediment is when there is no dissent. So that's the significance of dis dissent. However, the second part of my title is the price of dissent, right? Now remember, when you add a dissenting voice in a public meeting to a, an idea or a policy being proffered by people who hold power over you, you're also making yourself vulnerable. There will be cost for that, and you ought to know that already. And the costs can be different. Sometimes it can be a, when I was in Pakistan army, you know, it was direct threats to my career people I stood against actually tried to punish me right, through giving me a warning or a reprimand. In academia, it will be different. Very rarely would someone come up to you and say, you voice this opinion and hence I'm going to be your enemy. No, uh, it would be gaslighting. Sometimes people would just start pointing out that, you know, Masood Raja or so-and-so, he is like that. He, he always is going to say something like that. Gaslighting to a point where you will be discouraged to attend meetings, to say things. Uh, it could also be social isolation, right? No matter what you do, even if you're capable of certain things, you will not be given certain assignments. You will be told um, in so many different ways that your work is not important or you're not of no significance to whichever department you serve in. So that's you're sidelined and isolated. Uh, it could also be withholding of recognition, right? not just people in power, even your senior colleagues, because they could choose to not recognize your work. And you know how we all seek recognition. All of these actions, slightly passive aggressive, right? Uh, are, are geared towards forcing you to silence, right? Silence in a way that you start doubting your own motivations, you start doubting your own actions, you start feeling like as if you are doing something wrong. And I went through that phase. And what saved me and still saves me every single day is solidarity, right? When I reached out to my other colleagues, who were going through same kinds of experiences. When we met and talked about it, we realized that we were all going through same kind of experiences. And so it wasn't something necessarily that I had done wrong or said wrong, right? And that's when we started talking to each other, we started strategizing, and we realized that what was happening to us was structural, was systemic, right? And it wasn't necessarily because we had said something wrong or we had done something wrong. And when we became a constituency, of course, our dissenting voices became stronger, became more powerful. So the lesson that I would like you to, even when there is a personal price for dissent, is that the dissent ideally works better if you work in solidarity with other people, if you share your ideas, if you strategize, and if you fight together for justice, for equity, you know, for respect. And so these are some of my thoughts on, on dissent and its value. Uh, the reason I decided to do this was because so many times I think about my own life 
and the price that I might have paid for my actions and my words, but also the possibilities that I've had because I always sided with those who were weak. I always stood with those who maybe could, could have used my help, but who also helped me learn the world better. And that makes me much better about my life and much better about how I've lived it and how I plan to live it. So overall, anytime you're offering a contrary view to the established norm, you're dissenting from the norm. The purpose is to change the normative structure of power. And that you could do it individually. Of course, each one of us does it individually, but it is more effective if done collectively in solidarity with others. And it is also spiritually and emotionally healthier if you have colleagues and friends that you can talk to and that you work in concert with about any issues. But by and large, any living society, large or a microcosm like a department or a, a business, is better off if people have the possibility and the courage to dissent and to offer different views, contrary views to what is considered the norm. So these are some of my thoughts on dissent and its value and power. Um, if you have any questions, please post them in the comments. If you're listening to it on Patreon, you can po still post a comment there and I would be happy to answer it. And if you have any other suggestions for any other topics, please also post them in the comment section. And that is all I have today. And thank you so much. And I will see you next time.